It's going, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Hey, my name is James A. Powell, and uh, I do models. I make models, um, scale models. A lot of people give me compliments on my water. Uh, I do different types of water, deep water, deep ocean water, waves, things like that. Today, I want to show you how I do that. Um, I did a quick uh, tutorial on how to make, it was supposed to be deep water, deep ocean water, ended up being beach water. I thought that might be a little bit better. I didn't like how it was coming out, so I made beach water. And I want you to check out the tutorial. Uh, I will give you my Facebook and Instagram addresses at the end of this, but let's get started. How I make ocean water. Let's go. How do I make my water? And I got a couple different techniques. One is for open water. One is for like kind of like beach coastal water. I'm gonna show you the open water technique today. So it doesn't take all that much and it doesn't take a lot of skill. That's why I can do it. Um, it does take something like a drill with a small wire wheel brush or even a bigger wire wheel brush, depending on what scale you want to make your water in. Um, it also takes, well, here's, a, here's something else you could use a Dremel with a small wire wheel. That would work too. You gotta get this pink or blue foam, which a lot of people use uh, for dioramas, for model railroads and whatnot. This is, uh, I think it's Fomular, um, or I think they also call it, it's also called Styrofoam. Uh, Dow Chemical makes it and uh, I think Owens Corning makes it. This stuff I think is by Owens Corning. Um, even the bead foam will work. You just need some kind of substrate that you can make uneven surfaces in. Uh, bead foam or uh, heck, there's a technique like this where they use oatmeal for the surface of the water to make the waves. Um, you could use wood. It would take a long time to carve it, but you could use like an MDF or a masonite and, and carve that in. Uh, but I'll show you how to carve the texture and you can kind of use whatever you think might work. But there's a, a million different ways to do this. I like to use the pink or the blue foam. Works really well. I've also used the uh, yellow uh, foam we use in the uh, entertainment industry for doing carvings. That works really well too. And then there's a few other things you might need. Uh, well, a few other things you will need. I like to use really cheap acrylic paints and I just use four different colors. I got a Mars black, titanium white, a uh, I think it's aqua, what do they call it? Aqua, bright aqua green and uh, a phthalo blue. And I mix these together, uh, specifically the uh, the white and the green and the black and the blue uh, to make the different depths in the water. Uh, this here is probably your most expensive thing you're going to need. And I use this stuff all the time for water because uh, it works great. A Liquitex uh, clear high gloss varnish. Uh, this is, uh, they specifically call it uh, Liquitex gloss medium uh, in varnish. And uh, it, it works great. And you can layer it and layer it and layer it, make different effects. Uh, polyfiber, you can also use polyfiber to make uh, wave effects like here on this piece. Um, these wave effects are all made with polyfiber. Uh, the finer the polyfiber, the better. This one here is made with, uh, these waves here are made with a really coarse polyfiber and you start seeing the fibers and it do doesn't come out nearly as well. I just published an article in the Weathering uh, Magazine by Ammo, um, by Mig Jimenez and uh, it was a Higgins boat scene and I used the really coarse polyfiber and after reading the article, uh, and looking at the photos, I wish I didn't. It, it, you just can see the fibers and it's not nearly as nice as uh, uh, if you use a nice fine poly fiber. Uh, and then some water and an airbrush. Uh, I've tried this without an airbrush, but it really does take an airbrush to uh, do this properly. All right, so uh, with all that, we're gonna get started. Oh, oh, another thing you need, you definitely need a vacuum. You gotta have some kind of shop vac because this gets a little messy. But uh, with all, all that being said, we're gonna get started. All right. So, here's what we're gonna do. 
I got the pink foam, the Foamular here. And this, this version here, I'm gonna use the drill with the little wire wheel in it only because I think it's going to be a little bit quieter than the Dremel on high speed. So um, what I'm going to do is you can see I already started by testing and all we're going to do is we're going to make the undulations that will become the uneven surface of the waves. I'm going to turn the drill on. Like I said, this is super dirty, super messy. And I'm going to cut little troughs I'm gonna cut little troughs in where the uh, the kind of the direction I want the waves going. Cool thing about this technique is you don't have to start with a completely flat surface. If you wanted to carve the surface a little bit and, and make it undulating, if you want to do open water with some really big rocking waves, you could totally do that and it would work. Uh, most of the water that I'm going to do on my model railroad, on my layout, it's going to be a kind of a harbor and a beach scene, so it's going to be fairly flat. Uh, it's also going to be HO scale, 187th, but this technique can be used for uh, anywhere from a, you know, 1 6th or 1 12th, you know, like uh, GI Joe, original GI Joe doll size. Um, to, uh, you know, like an F scale or a G scale for a model railroad, um, to scales like a 135th military. I did a Normandy scene, a couple Normandy scenes with this technique, uh, beach landing scenes, uh, all the way to like a, a, an N scale in model railroads, really small, you know, you get up into the, the one, uh, one fiftieth, one two hundred scales, it works for all of them. You just got to vary the size of your uh, uh, the, these little troughs, these little cutouts here, and you can uh, you can make uh, some pretty darn cool water. Now check that out, see, really, there's some really deep cuts in there, but we're gonna be covering this up with paper towel and with a bunch of uh, uh, gel medium or uh, gloss medium, and that is gonna fill in a lot of this. So you might even wanna over-exaggerate some, some of your troughs. I'm gonna turn it around so I can get this side here. our water a little bit bigger and then we can actually start on the process. About that. Looking good. Now if I wanted to make a beach scene, I would just start making these, uh, you know, generally the waves are coming in towards the beach. So maybe I would make them really shallow where the beach is going to be. Let's say this area is going to be the beach. And then as I walk away from what would be the beach, I'd go deeper and deeper. So shallow, close to the beach, deeper and deeper as we go away. Now, obviously, if you want cool or calm water, you wouldn't uh, make real big ruts, but uh, I think that's going to work. And you can kind of get an idea that this is going to turn into waves. Let's see. Let's go over here. Maybe we'll do a little bit more beach area.
just like that. So maybe maybe there's some kind of jetty or something coming here, maybe a beach wall or a, a sea wall and there's beach. And then this is open water and this over here is open water. Okay, so I'm gonna vacuum this up and then we're gonna get on it. Ooh, it's all vacuumed up now. It's nice and nice and pretty, except for my drill. It's still covered with film. All right, so two things I forgot to tell you about that you need. You need some kind of wood glue. Uh, this tight bond original wood glue, it's got a trillion uses. It's really, really good for um, building, building almost any kind of model. I mean, people use it for plastic, which is crazy, but they do. Um, I use it for wood models, uh, but it's also really good for gluing down the secret ingredient to our water, which I haven't showed you yet, which is the good old American paper towel. Yeah, believe it or not, paper towels. So <laughs> even with the little pretty design on the paper towel, you're, you're fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. It only helps, makes a little bit more texture, but you can't tell that it's got the little design when you put it on. So what we're gonna do with the paper towels, we're gonna rip up a piece right here. We're actually going to put glue onto the surface and we're gonna glue the paper towel down onto the surface. Why are we gluing the paper towel? Well, it does a couple things. Uh, it will help fill in any deep voids you have. It'll fill in all these little, little wire wheel uh, ridges, just the little wire marks. You don't want to fill in the dimples you made. Took a lot of time making those dimples. You don't want to do that. It just gives a good base to paint on, and it gives a good base to um, apply your gloss medium. Amazingly enough, this stuff dries really fast. So this whole method we're going to show you uh, if you have... Ooh, the other thing I forgot to tell you about, the handy-dandy nifty hair dryer, which I use constantly in model building. Uh, I don't like to wait for anything, but if you have a hair dryer, you can make this go really fast. Now, I'll tell you, a lot of people, um, they like using resins for water. I hate it. it takes forever to dry. Um, likes to dry flat unless you're, unless you're constantly working with it. And uh, sorry, I had to walk away from the uh, camera there for a second, but unless you're constantly working with it, the resin, man, it's, it's really hard to make look good. I've definitely done it, but it takes hours and you gotta babysit it. So here we have what's going to be the base of our water, which can be on the, applied on any diorama, um, any type of water scene, any kind of model scale model water scene. Uh, actually, you could do some pretty cool art with uh, this technique too. Uh, we got an area that's maybe could be a beach. We got an area right here that maybe we could put in a, uh, a sea wall. And uh, we have our paper towel and our tight bond glue. Well, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. One thing I don't like about this glue is that it dries so fast that every time I go to use it, I have to clear the nozzle. Here we go, gonna clear the nozzle. I'm gonna put down the glue and I'm gonna spread it pretty thin. So let's get that all over here. And then I'm gonna take my water just a cup of ordinary water. And I'm gonna spread out this glue. Put a nice even coat over all this foam. Over all this foam. Maybe if I actually say the word foam, just air came out. No word. All right. So just spread this all over. Uh, if you're gonna do a beach, put it up where the beach is going to go. There's a couple ways you could do a beach. You could glue down sand first. Uh, you could sculpt this so it's a little higher and your water's a little lower. Uh, doesn't really matter. Or you could, an easy way like I'm doing right now, you just kind of apply the glue over where your beach is going to go and we'll put the paper towel right on that. All right, so here's, here's the cool thing. When you're doing huge areas of water, you're gonna use multiple paper towels. Just rip them up. Give yourself a nice soft edge. And when you start gluing this all down, Lo and behold, look at all those little ridges. Can you see the little ridges we're getting? We're adding texture to what's going to be water. We're adding additional miniature waves. So we're gonna cut up, all right, rip all this apart. There we go. I'm gonna make it hard on myself. I have a nice straight edge there. And that's gonna be fun to clean up. But here we go, we're gonna 
add additional waves. There we go. Right here, I want to come up onto the surface. So let's let's do that. We're gonna rip up some more paper towel. Don't need much. Right there. Dab it down. Okay, look at that. Cool. Now we're getting a lot of these nice little waves here. A lot of those are gonna disappear too. So if you don't like the way they're coming out, that's okay. Tap this stuff down. There we go. A few more. Do a nice big piece. Okay, here we go. I'll wet this up a little bit. Check that out. One more little area, a little bit more glue in here. Once again, with this tight bond glue, it dries super fast. All right, so you see how you have these little mini waves, I could, guess you could say, and they're going actually what would be kind of perpendicular to the beach, which doesn't really make sense. Now, if we would put a seawall here, it would work really well. Uh, I'm just gonna run my brush basically parallel to the way I want my waves to be moving. See, I'm even kind of popping some out there, which I kind of want texture. Now, the cool thing is once we start putting on the paint and the gloss medium, this is all gonna change, but it does give us a little extra texture. All right, so that's pretty cool and I can kind of live with all that. So I'm going to stop the camera now. We're going to let this dry. And as soon as this dries, we're going to come back and we're going to start painting. All right, so I didn't quite want to wait for it to dry, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. I use the hair dryer instead. But uh, let's see what we could do now. The first thing I do, you know, when I want to get the water is I actually write on the paper towel I start painting directly on this. That's a little loose yet, but that's not gonna matter. We're gonna soak this thing with gloss medium and it's definitely gonna stick down. See that, how loose it is? We can always do something like uh, re-wet it. We can even re-wet it with glue if we want. Um, re-wet it like that. It'll stick back down, there's, there's glue underneath it. Okay, so from there, what we wanna do is paint. So. First color I paint when I'm, uh, I've got some really dirty old uh, medicine cups here. I bought them at the hobby store. I think a 50 pack of them for a few bucks. Uh, we're gonna take my, my phthalo blue and I'm gonna take my Mars black. We're gonna make the, mix those together. I'm gonna make a really, really dark blue. Much darker than the phthalo blue by itself. We spray out the phthalo blue uh, in the airbrush thin it out and spray it out. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna look really cobalty. It's gonna be very cobalt up against this, which is cool, but we don't want very much of that. We wanna do our, our deep, uh, what we would say would be the troughs. And we wanna get those deep. If you're thinking about ocean water, and let's say we're not by the beach, but we're out in the deep water, you're not gonna see the ground, or you're not gonna see the, the ocean bottom or, or the surface or the floor. Uh, certainly when you're close to water, you're gonna, you're, to water when you're close to the shore you're gonna see the bottom so you're gonna use browns lighter colors like that um, which maybe we'll do I mean I certainly have some uh, since I kind of put a little beach area in here uh, but when you do open ocean water you want to get some really dark blues in the troughs so we're gonna mix just a little bit of phthalo blue Ew, nasty. And uh, there's some phthalo blue, you can see it in there. It's really, really blue. Uh, and we're gonna make some Mars black, just a little bit, because the Mars black is really gonna make it dark really quick. So we're just gonna put a little drop in. Maybe if the nozzle's not clogged up, that's all right, we'll unclog the nozzle. See, I did much, 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 pre much preparation for this video, as you can see. So here we have a little bit of Mars Black coming out. 
We're just gonna put a tick of that in with the phthalo blue. A little bit more than that. And we're gonna mix some water in there and we're gonna make it really thin so we can shoot it out of the airbrush. So, there we got our phthalo, phthalo blue, spilling water everywhere. All right, we're gonna mix in some water. I want this to be really thin. So, this might be too thin, but I can always pour out some. All right, so we're gonna mix in. See how bright that is? That phthalo blue is just super, super potent. And that is way too blue for what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour out some of this water and uh, mix a little bit more black in with that. So pour out some of it. And it's certainly, since we have a really little area, it's not gonna take much uh, paint at all. So here we go, a little bit more Mars black. And I'll put it right on my stir stick here. Yes, I'm not the uh, super clean model builder. I uh, get really messy all the time. And uh, we mix that in. So let's see if we can get it any darker with the Mars Black. Now if you can see that there, it's still really, really, really bright. Oh, look, I already started painting. I'm gonna dump some more out even. Man, that, look at that. I barely have any in there. That's how strong that stuff is. Get a little bit more Mars Black in here. Maybe a lot more Mars Black. Mix it in. Let's see where we get. Uh, it's finally darkening up. It's still not really enough. It is darkening up, but it's still, see there, it's getting darker. <laughs> I'm splashing paint everywhere. Okay, let's see. Uh, hey, not quite dark enough. It's getting really dark, but I want this just a couple steps. Let's see, look. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's pretty nice though. I don't know if you could tell on video, but that's pretty dark. Let's go with that. We're gonna airbrush that. I like it. It could be a little darker than that, but I think we'll be all right. So, I say so all the time. I notice a lot of other people do on videos too. I guess we're not professionals. Um, I put the, I have a really junky Iwata airbrush here. And I'm gonna turn on the compressor. Probably a good idea. Let's see what we can get here. Now, let's see. And I have the air turned way up, by the way. I mean, way up. I'm gonna shoot. Oh, here comes some color. We're gonna slowly go in and add color to where those deep troughs are. And if you hit high areas, don't worry because you're gonna come in again with uh, some of that aqua green mixed with white and some of the phthalo blue. And you're going to paint again with those colors. If you're doing a beach scene, you're gonna be doing tans. And a lot of that, especially if you're gonna do a tropical beach, a lot of that, uh, aqua color around the beach. One thing you gotta remember is you're, spray, you're painting one direction, in one direction, and you're gonna have a bunch of missing areas, which I'm sure you can see. All the areas over here where the airbrush missed, so you gotta turn it around, come from the other direction. You can make sure you include everything. I don't have a tank on this compressor, so it turns on and off constantly. I don't care. I think it's a Harbor Freight compressor, so 
If it burns up, it burns up. All right, so. Ah, this stuff is, is really coming up. Still isn't gonna matter. It'd be nice if it was stuck down completely, but. So, like I say, we're going into the lows. And we just keep going over it until the lows get really dark. If you're doing a beach, you don't put really dark colors like this by a beach. It's gonna ride in the lows. And I am going to, uh, I'm gonna run another uh, bead of glue over this just because I know I keep saying it doesn't matter if it doesn't stick down, but I'm running super high pressure on the airbrush right now. And uh, it is flying up and I'm not digging that. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm sure you can see now that the foam is a little shorter and it seems to be a little melted. That's because I got the brilliant idea of cutting it down and putting it in my toaster oven out here. Um, and I only had it in there for like one minute and started melting at uh, 250 degrees. So be very careful, foam melts, as we all know. Anyway, what I can show you with this though, is, which is really cool, is I can show you that this technique is super forgiving. Okay, so I melded this, and you know, if this was coming up, that'd be an awesome beach, but you know, it's going down, so it's not gonna work really well. So what can I do? Uh, it's gonna be a recess beach, so I don't wanna do that but I could make it into rolling waves. So how could I do that? All I gotta do is take this guy here, the grinder, and grind in some more trough. That's a little bit more dense because it melted, but I can grind in some more trough. Make sure you go the same, or pretty much the same direction you were going before. Doesn't matter if I tear into the paper. It does not matter. Check this out. There we go. Paper's pulling a little bit. Doesn't matter. Okay, put some more troughs in here. All right, now, well, holy crap, we ruined it. No, we didn't. Check it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some more glue. We're gonna add some more paper and we're gonna go, this whole thing is gonna be covered with paper towel. Well, that's simple enough. Even that bump there, that doesn't matter. That can be a white cap. All these little highs don't matter. They can be white caps. I would just suggest don't put your phone in the toaster oven. But hey, if we don't try, how do we know? So, yeah, I know. It's phone, it melts. Get it, I work with it every day. But hey. You win some, you lose some. Let's see what we can do with this. All right, so we're gonna spread out more glue on this with water and uh, really get it in there, coat it good. And then we're gonna go back with our paper towels and coat it. So here's some ripped up paper towels. Go over top of this here. Remember, it doesn't matter your edges. Your edges are going to go away. Let me see a little, a roll there. Hey, somebody's honking at us. All right, so you see that roll there? They're probably saying, who's that weird guy filming a video or talking to himself in his garage? All right, here we go, water. Do a little corner over here. Paper towel, seal it all in. Look, we got a straight edge right there. You're never gonna see it when we're done. Okay, there's a straight edge right here that you're not gonna see when we're done. All right, cool. So we got that all coated. There's a high right there. That'll be a white cap. Uh, for dioramas, it's kind of cool. And I don't have glue over here, but you can actually Bring your waves and bring them over the edge. That looks super neat. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut those off. So we're gonna dry this off. We'll be back in a second. 
and uh, hopefully this will all be dry. I promise I won't put it in the toaster oven this time. And let's see what we get. Okay, so this thing, with the help of the hairdryer, is uh, kind of starting to dry. I'm gonna cut off all this, this extra, I think, if it actually comes off. I'm going to attempt to pull off the extra paper. Um, as you know, cutting through wet or semi-wet paper towel probably isn't the easiest thing. Because it doesn't want to come, but, you know, like I said before, hell with it. Let's figure it out. All right, so we're going to cut through here. There's some, some of this off. You can hear it crunching. That's because of the glue. Um, run, run through here. Don't have to be neat. It's just a demo for you guys. All right. All right. There we go. Actually, you know, it's kind of cool as we, we were using the, the wood glue, and the wood glue's got yellow in it, and it's a little bit mixing with the, the blue and kind of making an aqua. That's kind of a cool look. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut off the rest of this. Okay, cool. So, what's the deal stuff? You're peeling up right here. Well, it's really not this hard if you do it right the first time. It really isn't. Um, we're going to get that glued down. Now, once again, like I said, and most of you probably know it, that that wood glue is super fast drying. So, I mean, it literally takes a couple minutes. So there we go. We have uh, a surface covered in paper towel. And you're like, well, that looks like crap. And uh, yeah, it does a little bit, but let's uh, spray some blue on here. and Kind of get it all covered. All right, so remember, we're gonna find the troughs. These areas are a little deeper in here. I think a lot of the black has settled out. It's been a few minutes since I was painting, but that's okay. We'll put some blue in there and we'll come back with some of the blue black. So we wanna go to the deeper areas. This obviously is very deep compared to the rest of the piece. Um, come in here. And you can also, you don't have to have the 3D texture. You can paint in your deep troughs. If they're not there, that's okay. You can paint them in. Just like you can paint in the highs. All right, so I'm going to mix up some black and some blue this time again. And we are going to dump in some of this nasty, nasty dark blue blacky color. And we'll hit those areas we just hit with the light blue. Let's see what we get. So there's our blue black that really never mixed properly. There we go. Right there. See how bright it is? Very, very bright stuff. We are going to get some more black. The never ending story here of adding black to our blue. And I'm sorry, I'm off camera mixing in black. We'll come in right here on camera. Not that you need to see me mix paint. But, and these are also pretty old paint, so they're not necessarily the, the best to work with. They're, they're pretty old, but I'm gonna mix in that black. And we're getting a darker, much darker black, which is good. All right, so put this in the airbrush and go to town. Okay, so I'm gonna dump this into our messy, messy airbrush. And, uh, but I will say Iwata's are great airbrushes. This one's just old. All right, here we go. I'm gonna see what we get if we, first that blue is gonna come out. I didn't rinse it. Get some of that dark blue here in a second, I'm sure. Oh, look at that. There's that dark blue coming out now. So this area up here, hit it with a lot of the dark blue. 
here, here, this area. We'll put a lot of dark blue in it. Put it over here, dark blue. Kind of go, move your arm with the direction of your waves. Then you want to get all those low troughs with this dark blue. Or open ocean or open water. If you're going for shallows, completely different technique. Well, similar technique, different colors. There's a dark spot right there. There you go. Go over my splatter marks here. Now, one thing I do that a lot of people don't do is once I put on the gloss medium, I paint on top of that. Too. Um, I'll come back with blues and go on top of that. Try to give it some depth. Look, there's a fingerprint right there. I'm going to go over that with gloss medium and you're never going to see it. So darken up the lows. So we're getting somewhat of a pattern going here, which is cool. Almost like a, kind of like a tiger striping pattern, I guess you could kind of say. Let's go with some thinner areas. There's that fingerprint again. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it's it, it's getting there. It's got some some areas that have some interest. Got a little bit more uh, dark blue we can spray on here. Connect some things once again, kind of like tiger stripes. Take your troughs and they can kind of be connected, almost like camouflage. Um, I usually try to have some kind of, you know, all the troughs are kind of going the same general direction. Uh, they're all somewhat parallel to each other. Obviously, if you're in a, if you're modeling a storm, it wouldn't be like that. But, uh, I do that usually. So right here, this area is a little bit flatter. We're gonna add our own kind of tiger striping. Again, remember, I have this airbrush cranked way up. I mean, I'm shooting like probably like 30 pounds out of it. Should be like 14. I'm shooting like probably 30, 35 pounds. Way too much. That's okay. Okay. Remember, this is the dark, dark blue color. Like I say, kind of getting some tiger stripey kind of look. And you see, you can still see patterns from the uh, from the paper towel, and that's okay. That really doesn't matter. Get some color on that piece it's hanging on. I've tried to do the, this with brushes before. You can, it just doesn't give the softness that you need. Yeah, it's still coming up right there. Once again, it'll dry with the gloss medium and it'll be okay. There we go. I'm just gonna use up this whole cup. They're running into the troughs. There's some troughs here. Running those, running all these. The really low spots. Okay, so that's that. It's kind of got a watery look, kind of. Move this low spot out of the way so you can kind of see it there. 
right. Well, let's go with that brighter blue. So I'm gonna dump out this nasty blue black that we had. And I'll shoot a little bit of water through the airbrush, not much. I don't really care if it bleeds over. Shoot a little bit through and dump out some of this. And uh, let's see what we got here. See if I can clean out the airbrush a little bit on a paper towel. Feel that dark coming through. It's gonna clean. Oh no, we dumped the water on our water. Our water got wet. Uh oh. Okay. We will live with that and we will tamp it. Let's see, look at that. Okay. Cool. All right, so we're going to put in our brighter blue. You got to be careful with this stuff because this stuff will take over everything. Shoot it until we get some bright blue through, and here it comes. There's some are kind of like pure phthalo. Let's give some a little bit higher areas in this water. Not going to go quite as crazy as we did with the black. We're going to take some of those areas that are somewhat yellow from the wood glue. And we're going to hit those lightly. Pull out some. Get rid of some of that yellow. You don't want to get rid of it, all of it though, because you need enough light there so your your aqua green will show you. Whoa! Got a glob there. Okay, you see? See now? It's starting to get the right color pattern. It's just all dull, so it doesn't look like water. See if we can layer some, look at, we're gonna layer some phthalo onto some of that really dark stuff. And as you make it so it's kind of opaque, the brighter phthalo will come over top of the dark. That looks pretty good. Okay. You know, if you, if this, uh, your phthalo is really translucent, you're not going to really see, uh, you're going to see through it. You're going to see a lot of that black. But I'm layering the phthalo, making it more opaque so you can see more of it. See that? This piece is really bothering me because it's all white, so I'm going to turn it blue. But look at the difference in color there. All right, here we go. Shoot some more phthalo. You can pull it a little bit into your light areas, a little bit. A lot of water in there, you can see. All right, it'll dry. A little bit more phthalo onto these greeny areas. Like I say, green because the blue mixed with the yellow, the wood glue, and then kind of a green. That's okay. All right, see that? See that right there? All right, now, we got this really deep trophy area over here. We got a really deep area over here. It's kind of cool. All right, so what we're gonna do is when we, when we start working on this, we can put some white, some ridges in there, and it'll look really cool. All right, so there's that. Pretty cool. All right, we're gonna dump out the rest of this phthalo. Now I'm gonna mix up a little batch of the aqua. And the aqua, just like the phthalo, can be super overbearing. And you can get way too much of it really, really fast. But I love the effects it does, especially if you're trying to do like tropical, like beach water. Oh. It looks so awesome. Um, really, if you're doing open, like really deep open water, you're only gonna put a little aqua around parts of the waves. Um, that's it, where your water has kind of come up out of the, uh, I guess the, 
the plane of the ocean. It's kind of come up and the light's showing through it, so you're gonna see a little bit of green. But we're gonna throw just a little bit, well, it's a lot, but we're gonna mix some water with it. We're gonna throw a little bit of aqua in here and uh, see what we can get. Um, you know, maybe this is right offshore. Maybe this isn't uh, total deep ocean. There we go, aqua. Except it's very watery. Mix it in the airbrush. I'm hanging my airbrush over on a power cord over here. So it's hard to get on and off. Um, you make do with what you got. Okay, there we go. Put a little bit in there. We'll get some paper towel and see what we get. Here's some, some of that paper towel. Or rinse out blue. And see what happens. See a little bit of aqua coming through. There we go. The blue is getting lighter. Blue is getting lighter. Still a lot of blue in there. Oh, there's some dark. We have come to the point where I have to rinse out my airbrush for once. Oh, wow, it's empty. There wasn't much paint in there at all. Let's try to see if we can get a little a thicker spot. I'm going to mix it up. So that entire spray I did right there was with what I thought was aqua paint, but it wasn't. All right, so here we go. Try this. Thin aqua paint. Oop, a little drippy. Don't want to get those chunks in there. That would be bad. All right, let's see what we get here. Oh, there we go. Got some aqua there. All right, so let's hit. Sorry, I just bumped the camera. Let's hit a little aqua in here and see what we get. Once again, I'm tiger striping. I want to hit the areas that I didn't hit. The areas I wasn't going after the blue with. The areas that I kind of left white or lighter. That's the areas I'm going to hit with this. We'll even, we could even come down in here in that low spot and hit some. Working. Remember, I come back and paint after I put gloss medium on here. If you get messed up, you can always fix it. I mess up all the time. So, you're very used to fixing it. Fixing mistakes. I am kind of almost making this a little bit more coastal than, than deep water now. Like playing with this. See, I'm tiger striping. I'm just kind of going up. Almost like the bark of a tree. Bark of no tree. Making little eyes. Running out of my aqua again. All right, so that is kind of the base of what we're gonna have with aqua. Oh, there's some more coming out. 
just had to turn my airbrush a little bit. You can see you're kind of getting that wave action kind of look to it. You got that dark blue in the troughs of the waves. And it really honestly doesn't matter even if you stay on the troughs of the waves or not. Probably should, but um, if you stay with the dark in the trough, uh, the, the up and downs, troughs and the valleys and the crests are just to give you some 3D to your waves. Look at that. Kind of a cool look, little shimmering type of area. I'm throwing some brighter aqua right here. Check that out. All right, so our next step when we come back is we're gonna start brushing on some gloss medium. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. And what are we gonna do? Uh, let's see, now we are going to add gloss medium to the top of this water. It's as straightforward as this. You take your gloss medium, open it up, and you squirt it out. Done. That's it. You don't do anything else. <laughs> Kidding. All right, so you're gonna take the gloss medium and uh, you're gonna brush it on. And uh, this time, this I'm going to go, this time I use the brush medium, I'm gonna go uh, parallel with my lines that I have on my, uh, for my water. Uh, my line, my wave lines, or the actual waves, will go parallel to the direction of the waves. All right. So it's that easy. Uh, good thing about gloss medium also that I've found, first of all, you don't need to put it on very thick. And if, you know, another good thing is it's awesome with the hair dryer. You can dry it up super fast with the hair dryer. Now, one thing I noticed in this is that, let's see if you, you start moving. Look at, look at in the light. All of a sudden you start getting these crazy reflections and you instantly think of light or sunlight reflecting off of, reflecting off of water. Look at that, look at that. Now, I might change the look of this. I got a lot of dark blue and a lot of light green and usually the two don't go together. Um, usually it's light blue and dark blue, and and then light blue and light green, not light green and dark blue, but, you know, hey, maybe it's fantasy water. But what I'm gonna do is once this dries, you just brush it. You're gonna lose some of your paint. We're losing some of our paint there. It's okay. Remember, like I said, we're going to paint this multiple times with this gloss medium to build up some thickness. All right, so I went parallel. Now I'm going perpendicular to my waves, kind of scrape off, see that? The gloss medium is actually picking up some of the paint. Totally fine, totally fine. After you get a coat or two of this on it, it's not gonna pick up any more paint. Um, so here we go. Perpendicular, parallel. Check that out. Check out the reflection. Check out the light reflection on that. Cool, huh? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna dry this up really quick with the hair dryer, and then we're gonna come back and hit it with some more paint. And I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna throw some light phthalo blue over top of that green. I want to see what it looks like. Um, one thing I could do is I could just spray it with a, uh, a really thin layer of white. But I'm gonna try some light phthalo blue over that. We already have the pure phthalo blue. Um, that's very, very blue. Let's we'll shoot it over top of that green and see what it comes out like. So we're gonna dry this, we're gonna shoot it over top of that and uh, we'll be right back. Well, after three minutes under the hair dryer, it's dry to the touch. All right, so I'm gonna cut this off a little annoying tab there. I'm gonna cut that off, I don't like it. Trim off a couple of these other little things. Like I say, I've seen some really, really cool dioramas where they take this and they actually make the waves look like they're coming over the edge of the diorama. Just gorgeous stuff. 
Um, all right, so there's our non-square diorama top. Uh, now there's two ways I could go with the color of this water here. I can either go with a light blue and go over the dark areas, or I can go and, and make it like a, uh, like a tropical kind of water, or I can go over the green, the aqua area with the light blue and make it deeper. Um, and it really doesn't matter. If I mess up, I just put another layer of gloss on it and paint it again. So it really, really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to attempt to put a layer of light blue, light phthalo blue, over top of the green. And let's see what happens over top of the aqua. I have no idea if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. Because no matter what, we're going to end up with a cool result. I probably just should have jumped right into the aqua. But uh, let's see what we get here. So we're gonna take our airbrush. We have uh, a bunch of this phthalo I've poured out. It's pretty thin, but I think it'll work. And I am going to grab a paper towel. And there we go. Some really thin phthalo. Uh, may not work the first time because it's really thin, but let's see what happens if we... Oh yeah, it's really thin. But we could start spraying... Oh God, that looks cool. Spraying it on top of the green, I'm gonna give it a blue color. Right, so I'm just gonna go over top of the green. There we go, it's coming in blue right now. I don't know if you can see it, how well you can see it on the camera, but it is turning blue. That green, I can sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me, whew. All right, so that green is turning blue. And that's what we want. That is what we want. So, you see that? See how it's turning blue? Just gonna keep going over that. So we're gonna hit phthalo really light over top of the aqua. It's working. Little bit, little bit. my pressure up but my volume is way down so it's trying no and then right now I'm gonna run just air so right now this is just air no paint and dry some of this up see the gloss now the gloss is gonna start dying out because we're painting on top of it so remember that gloss will help us fill in areas of texture and we do want some smooth areas, unless we're going for a really, really, really uh, small scale um, where the waves are really small. I want to fill in some of that texture, but not all of it. So here we go, coloring it with the blue. Really super thin phthalo. That. That's cool. All right. So that's kind of more of what we're going for. Not totally, but more. Um, let's go. We'll dry this out. And we're going to throw on another layer. Again, it's going to take three or four layers of gloss medium. I'm going to throw on another layer of gloss medium. Okay. Right here, it's all green still. It's kind of cool. Maybe this is shallow over here. 
shallower you get, the more greener it's gonna get. If you're gonna do tropical, you're gonna get browns. You're gonna get, uh, you know, soot washing up and the more, uh, I wouldn't say climates, but you know, maybe freshwater areas, uh, maybe areas where it's colder. Um, you're gonna do a lot of, you know, I like a lot of dark, um, like the really dark blues for colder, colder water, like Maine or Massachusetts or something like Alaska. You're gonna have these really cold looking waters. All right, so we're gonna wipe out, once again, gloss medium. Now, you don't need much. Just the thinnest layer of this stuff with a brush will gloss everything right back up. That first layer, you can put a lot on. It'll take a while to dry but you can put a lot on. Subsequent layers, you don't need much. There we go. Parallel to your waves. Parallel to your waves. If you got some in the valleys that you don't want, just in the troughs of the waves, just pick it out with the brush, smooth it around. our shine back all right so we'll wipe out a brush a little bit wipe some of this off and one thing about this gloss medium because it has a lot of body you can kind of build up highs with it so if you want to kind of wipe it to your areas where your highs are on your lighter parts of your waves just wipe it in there and, and use your brush to, to push it into the highs Clear off the lows, clear off the troughs. Troughs of the waves, clear them off if you don't want the material to build up. If you do, if you made a mistake, yeah, let your material build up in there. But let's just push it around. I'm gonna build up material on the highs. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna dry that up again. Time to run it through the Hair dryer again, we will be back. Okay, so we got the hair dryer on there. You can see it's still not totally dry, it's still a little milky. But here's some deep ocean water. See how much more green the one we're doing is compared to this one? Which makes me think that, you know, even though we just added some blue to the aqua, it kind of has a tropical kind of feel to it. I should get a couple little palm trees and throw on it, but, uh, you know, here's here's some of your rolling waves. Um, they do kind of look like they're rolling up on a beach, but this is uh, more of an open water color. So I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna throw a little bit of that uh, phthalo blue, the light phthalo blue on the dark spots, and maybe this will be a more of a tropical look. So here's another one. It's got some, now the blue in this one's a little bit brighter, but you can see yeah, let's see right there. You can see some of the brighter blue. And you can see what happens when you use really coarse, look at that. That's really, really coarse uh, polyfiber. You can see it in the way it's kind of ugly. Um, but it's got a little bit more blue in it. We're going to go with a little blue over the darks, and let's see what we can do here. Um, I think it's going to be pretty, pretty sharp. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that right now. So, we already have phthalo blue in the airbrush. So really all that means is we need to take that phthalo blue and kind of shoot it over top of the darks. So let's make sure, it's been a few minutes, let's make sure we still got blue coming out. Yeah, remember that phthalo blue is really thin that we have in here. We don't have much left, but we can make more. So we're gonna hit that phthalo blue over top of some of these darks. Now, in the really dark water, maybe there's a big wave right here. I'm not gonna put much of it, and we'll go phthalo blue. So basically, we sprayed phthalo blue on the lights, and now we're spraying it on the darks. I'm gonna go for a little bit more of a tropical feel, I think. With everybody being locked up at home, you know, kind of in the mood for some beach. So, we're gonna... Remember, same thing. You do the same technique with just different colors. Okay. So that's kind of cool. I'm liking that. All right, so 
you can see there, just lighten up some of those darks. Now, another thing we can do, let's try it. I'm gonna turn off the camera for a second. I'm gonna go get some sandy color. I'm gonna throw some sandy colors in here and let's see if we can get it to look like a beach. Why not? That could be pretty fun. Doing something, making something look like a beach is a heck of a lot more hard than doing open ocean, but let's try it. Let's see if we can get it. Um, I will turn off the camera and we'll be right back. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna try. I got some uh, uh, ammo by Mig Jimenez Light Wood. Now there's all kinds of colors you could use for a beach, but we just wanna get kind of a sandy kind of color. Uh, and we're gonna go where the water would be, right up on the edge. So let's try this and see what happens. Um, where would it be? It would be the shallows. Let's run it this way. Now you're still gonna have, um, you're still gonna have, you're not gonna see right through. You're gonna have basically water where the light doesn't, uh, shatters kind of hitting uh, from the light, uh, water will be a little bit shallower. So let's see if we can maybe simulate that. Especially, let's say this area right here is closer to the beach. We're just as we get farther out, we don't want to see really much of what would be the beach, right? You can't see that deep into the water when you're farther out. The water starts getting a few feet deep, four or five feet deep, ten feet deep. I guess we're all kind of like giants in the model world, so maybe we're hundreds of feet. But you could still kind of see. Let's get it more solid up here. Maybe the water is getting very shallow right here. We're going to get little areas where you can kind of see the beach. Right now, that looks a little dark there, so we don't want to be so dark right here. So let's go sand kind of showing through. Same thing here, a lot of sand. About that. So that area, that trough is, maybe that you could see the, maybe you could see the sand under the water a little better in the trough. And maybe I'm totally wrong, but I'm gonna say maybe you could. We wanna just barely pull the sand color, this sort of beach color out into the water, just barely. Especially when you start getting out here, which would be the deeper areas. Let that aqua, that lighter color kind of take over. And then here we can kind of throw it around a little bit. stand up I'm sitting in a chair right now if I stand up maybe I can get a little bit better view and I'm gonna break it up a little with a little bit more smaller tiger striping so I'm gonna kind of make these eye shapes like the CBS eye like an eyeball shape I'm gonna kind of cut those in all over the place yeah there we go and as we get farther out, they get bigger and eventually they disappear. Like that. That's kind of cool. And that trough, let's fill in that trough. Fill it in with sand. Do some more eyeball shapes. You know, I just want to kind of get the light distortion look where the the light is distorted from the uh, from the wave action. There we go. Look at that. Now we're gonna go a little heavier in these areas. Closer to the beach, heavier. 
very, very shallow. You can see a lot more into the water. Now, once we start putting in white caps and foam and whatnot, we can break all this up. Kind of cool. Smaller. Smaller patterns, larger as we pull back to the, the edge. The water's edge, the pattern will be bigger. Smaller as we walk away. Lighter touch. Except that. <laughs> Except that, we're going to walk away there. Just barely, you're just barely seeing any sand under the water now. Look at that. That's kind of cool. I'm going to bring A little bit. This is this low area. I hate this low area where I melded it, but maybe we can do something with it. So we're gonna throw it right there. Just leave a little bit of aqua. How about that? How about that? I think that's pretty cool, right? You like that? Okay, so boy, and I still have a cup. That goes a long way, that light wood. By ammo. Okay. And maybe I can make some harder marks in there. Okay, cool. All right, so there's that. And uh, what are we going to do now? Now we got to wash out this. So as soon as we wash it out, we'll be right back. Here we go. All right, we washed out. The cup, the airbrush, not really washed out. We rinsed it with some water. Um, I don't think you can really call that washing. Um, I'm going to throw a little bit more aqua on that sand. Just to wash out the sand a little bit. Let's see what we can get here. This is cool. I'm liking this. It looks, uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, once it's glossed up, it's going to look really good. All right, so we're going to get a little bit of aqua. It's really thin. There's the sand that's still in the brush. There's the aqua coming out. What can we do? Can we do just a little bit of aqua in the transition period, or transition period, in the transition area between the darker water and the lighter water? So we're just gonna go with just a little bit of aqua, shoot that onto our sand. And this is super light, holy cow is this light. But it is putting a little bit of color, a lot of water in here putting a little bit of color on top of that sand. It's super light. Just a little color on it. And then I'm gonna shoot just air. There's so much water in here. Here comes some aqua. It's a whole shooting match. Nice little transition. And we got all this little puddling of the water. That's okay, don't even worry about that. We'll blow that out. And we dry this off with the hair dryer to be cool. Yeah, look at that. You can feather in those watery thick areas. Feather those in. This thick aqua area. You do, heck, you can even take a. There we go. Take it, pull, pull it up. Pull it up. There we go. Look. Aqua. Spray it over there like that. Really light mist. Very sandy. Aqua. Cool. Okay, so. Yeah. But look how much it dulls everything out. Flattens out the gloss 
this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put gloss right back on there. So, see straight on. So look, can you see it? There it is. Straight on. Throw gloss on there and let's see what we get. Okay. Gloss medium. Once again, you don't have to put on a ton. There it is. Let's see what we get. Here we go. Very light touch now. The more layers we get on here, with that this without this gloss medium being completely dry, we want to go with a light touch. So we don't start wiping off our paint. And we're gonna go parallel, parallel to our waves. There it is. Make that shiny. What do you think about that, huh? Now, in those troughs, I didn't put a lot of gloss medium on here, so you gotta make sure you get down in those troughs. Every bit has to be perfectly shiny. You can't leave any dull spots or it just won't look right. Now, what could you do with this? You could float, um, uh, foliage, uh, like uh, weed, seaweed, kelp, um, floated on the surface. That would look really cool. Uh, you could actually do a couple layers and make it look like there's uh, seaweed down on the on the seabed or on the floor. Um, rocks. You could totally do rocks. You could have water splashing up um, against rocks, kind of like. Let's see this little this little doohickey diorama I have here. Uh, some crazy water splashing up against some rocks. See that? And you can do something like that. All right, so we got gloss. We got this really shiny surface. We're going to get that to dry. Then we're going to put some white caps on it. We're going to put uh, a couple little roller waves, white caps like they're coming into the beach. So we probably kind of curl them in this direction. So like this, they're coming in this way. We're going to, we're going to uh, dry up that gloss medium. We're going to put in some waves and we'll be back again for about the 500th time. Okay. Okay, so get this. I look everywhere. I can't find my polyfiber. Where's it at? I look every place I think it could be. It's nowhere to be found. So what do I do? I go to my youngest daughter and I say, hey, youngest daughter, do you have any stuffed animals that have the fluffing coming out of them? And she's like, yeah, I got a couple of them. So she finds me this one. Here's some fluff. But it's very coarse. It's hard to, it's hard to show on the camera, but it's super coarse. This is that stuff that I was talking about you don't want. It's really, really coarse. But then she said, I have another one that has another stuffed animal and it, it's got fluff coming out and it's softer. This is a little bit softer. I, Highly doubt you're gonna be able to tell the difference between the two, but this one's coarser and this one's softer. The softer, the better. It's still a little coarse, but it's not bad. So we're gonna use this, this little bit of polyfiber to make white caps, and it's gonna look cool. So here we go. What are we gonna do? All right, so first of all, when you're making white caps, you barely need any. I mean, we're talking a little bit, like that much. Right? We're going to take it and we're going to roll it. At least this is how I do it. Could be wrong. I could be completely dead wrong about this. But I take it and I roll it. And maybe I give a little bit of a, a puff in the middle where the water is going to be a little bit thicker. And we're, remember, the ocean supposedly is out here and it's coming into the beach through our uh, right angled beach that we have here <laughs> we're gonna put this coming into the beach so what do we do it, it's pretty simple I mean we got some somewhat wet gel medium or gloss medium on here boom oh look at that a white cap hmm or a roller a little one let's try again we're gonna take another little piece and we're going to roll it up. You don't have to roll it where the ends are all 
pretty and tight or whatever. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it. You know, these things don't even have to come in this way. I mean, waves, they could be white caps for big, long areas. They generally are parallel, all right? They don't have to be completely parallel, but they generally are. Um, it only kind of makes sense. They're waves, and waves kind of start as concentric circles and most of the time and they kind of spread out and so they're parallel but so we're going to just roll this out now maybe the wave kind of stopped and continued our gloss medium is still a little bit tacky so i can just place these guys right down on here like that see that a little bit. And you don't need tons of waves either. It, it, you know, if you put a lot of waves in there, it's, it's just crazy. You can, you know, if you're doing like a storm scene, but if you're doing a beach, do not put in tons. It's just, there's, the frequency is not that much. Unless you're right up on the beach where you get foam. And if you're gonna do foam, you could pull it out like this, where, you know, you got foam that's gonna hit the beach the, the, the water is gonna come up, it's gonna recede, and as it's receding, you know, a lot of times you'll see foam on the beach like this. Just a little bit, maybe we can layer it up a little bit like this. You got your receding kind of foam like that. Oh, you say, well, that looks like crap because it's all dry. Well, we're gonna tamp it down with gel medium again or gloss medium so look see it's receding and maybe once we get these on we're gonna put a big wave back in back in here at that edge so there we go what's that look like it's kind of cool it's a little, little bit too patterned I don't really I'm not digging that too much so let's put that guy on that right there he's a little bit bigger because he's right on that right on the peak of that wave you know he's right on the crest so he's gonna roll over so there we go so we got those guys now what do we do same thing gloss medium right over top of them. boom 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 and we're going to slowly tamp we're going to keep the waves where they're at slowly tamp them with the gloss See, oh, sorry, hit the camera again. Not a professional cameraman by any means. Not even an amateur. Less than that, probably. But I'm sure you can tell by my lighting. <laughs> Here we go. So we're going to... There we go. Look at that. What do you think? So we got this little guy right on the crest. We're going to bring him right up, kind of like he's kind of coming over. So the water's low right there. It's coming up on the beach, but the water doesn't have to be flat. It can, it can have some action to it. So that guy right there, he's coming up there. We're gonna load these guys up. Now here's our foam. Use this as the foam that goes up on the beach. The next one of these videos, I'll do, I'll do some sand so you can see what it looks like. And the sand's gonna be different colors, you know, as the water kind of drains out, drains back into the ocean. The sand kind of changes color. Sand looks wet, and then it uh, it uh, uh, gets more dry. Even if it is wet, it still looks drier. So here we go. Tamping in, putting in this gel medium. Now, or this gloss medium. I keep calling it gel medium. Gel medium is awesome also. It's just a thicker version of this, and it's used for making waves and whatnot. Um, the reason I'm not gonna use it in this video is it takes forever to dry, like literally, it could take overnight, it could take a couple days, I'll never get this video done, and I'm impatient and wanna get it done because I wanna get back to building models. So, here we go. Look at that, cool. Okay, so we are soaking, absolutely soaking. Absolutely soaking the polyfiber with the gloss medium, okay? There it is like that. Now, I'm going to grab something I have really quick. 
that I didn't have on my table like I should have. Oh, just got caught in my boat. Ouch. Okay. This is gel medium. Uh, ammo by Mig Jimenez. Acrylic water for dioramas. From all I can tell, it's really just gel medium uh, with color in it. It is awesome stuff. You can make amazing water effects with it. And, you know, those pictures are legit. It, you can make some really, really cool stuff with it. Uh, but if you wanted to build up some bigger waves, give it some more body, you can use this stuff, mix it with the polyfiber and let it dry. It just takes a long time. There's other things you can use. Silicone caulk. The problem with silicone caulk is nothing will stick to it. So if you're going to use it, make sure it's your very top layer. Um, you can use clear acrylic caulk. That works a lot better and you can paint on top of that. Um, you can... Heck, I've used uh, CA, CA glue, build it up, sprayed it with zip kicker uh, or kicker accelerant, and it, it bubbles, turns white. You can do effects with that also. So there we go. That That is that. So I'm going to dry this off, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to uh, put in probably what looks like a big roller wave here, like it's, like it's cresting up, and uh, we'll dry it off. We'll do a little bit of dry brushing and it'll be done. All right, so I dried up a little bit more of that. That's what it's looking like. It's getting there, kind of cool. You can see the uh, resin is still drying up a little bit. But uh, what I say, I said I wanted to take this little low, you can see that low lying area right there. And at the very back of it, I'm gonna make a, a uh, wave that's a little bigger and it's kind of uh, white capping. Um, it necessarily shouldn't probably be right behind that little white cap there, but that's okay. We're going to do that. After we do that, we're going to do some dry brushing um, to really pop out some of these waves. But here we go. What are we going to do? So we need a, a bigger amount, you know, a bigger amount. And there's also there's a little bit more airbrushing you can do if you're going to do these bigger waves. So... What do I want this to look like? Now this thing, I'm not gonna be able to totally complete in this video only because you really need it to dry, but I think I can get, ooh, maybe I'll just combine the two. Yeah, maybe I'll combine the two. Okay, so it's a huge hump there. It's kind of crazy looking, right? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump on our buddy, our gloss medium, All right, dump that on there. I'm really gonna get this thing soaking wet. So it wasn't as tacky, so I didn't want to stick down like the other ones did before um, because I used the hair dryer on it to start drying it out. All right, here we go. So it's pretty wet there. What we want to do is we want to start almost teasing it up. All right, so we're going to tease that up. I think I want to connect these two to make them look like they're part of the same wave. I want to tease this up like this. There's also another hint, a little, little trick I'm going to show you with these. See these little fuzzes that are sticking up and they'll, and they'll kind of stick up everywhere? We're going to take a flame and get rid of most of those. But right now we're going to show, now, now that we're doing this white cap, and here it's kind of, it's kind of rolled over here. Uh, let's see, what I, what can I get to pull that up? Ooh, I have a stick here. And I can kind of tease it a little bit. So I'm gonna, I wanna get this kind of where it's, see that how it's kind of, like it's collapsing on itself. There we go. It's almost like a, uh, I pull out some of the wave water out here and then we wanna get it like it's going to collapse on itself, like it's a, uh, a really little tube wave, just a really little one. It's gonna pull it up, make a little cave in there. This guy, it's kind of came over and collapsed. Just went in front of itself. Should I connect that? Nah, this, this wave collapsed on itself. I don't wanna connect those two. Okay, so there. 
Now you say, well, yeah, it's all white. Yeah, you can't do it all white. That's where the airbrushing comes in. We're gonna get in here on the back side of this and we're gonna put a little bit of aqua where the water has come up above the plane of the rest of the water and light is somewhat shining through it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually pulling the wave on the backside back a little bit. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit here. Okay. Now when we airbrush this next part, it does take a really light hand. And I think you'll get the, even if I don't do it right, I think you'll get the idea. Okay, so we have this way that's coming up this ridge that we accidentally made from melting the foam. There we go, like that. Okay, so we have all these little furry things. What do we do? A couple different things. This is the cheapest and cheatingest method right here with this. I'm not, this isn't my favorite way to do it because this, we're gonna use flame, all right? Flame, make sure that you're only using water-based. Flame will kind of ball up everything a little bit, so I'm not too excited about what it does, but it does kind of make a little splash. So this is gonna burn off all the little hairs. Those little hairs are so annoying. When you have the really, really coarse polyfiber, this looks horrible, you can't do it at all. With this uh, thinner polyfiber, it looks pretty good. So we're just burning off the little hairs. Right there, okay. And if it does ball up, it'll look like little splashes of water. Okay, so smells wonderful. Uh, <laughs> at least it's not real hair. Okay, so now what we gotta do is we gotta get a little bit of aqua into that big wave. Um, it's just too white. We don't need much aqua, we barely need any. I have a little bit in the airbrush still. Let's see if I can... Okay, there we go. Got a little bit in the airbrush. We're gonna barely, barely Let's throw some aqua on the back side of that wave. And we are just barely pulling the trigger. I see it coming out a little bit right there. But the aqua is where that water is coming up above the surface. There we go. And then really it's almost like, you see that little aqua right there? Just a little bit. You can hit it the back sides of these, these little baby rollers. But not much, you just barely want to hit any. As soon as you get too much green on there, it's super, it's, it's not a good effect at all. But this helps blend it in. Get a little bit of green. Right there, it's a little bit too much. All right, so we got a little bit of green on the back sides of the rollers. And I'm gonna try to hit a little up underneath this one. Ah, that's too much. <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. All right, so you know what? I can hit some green up underneath there because if you were seeing through the water, it would look green. So I'm gonna hit, hit a little bit up underneath and then I'll tamp it back down. So. Okay, there's a little bit. And then I'm gonna tamp it back down and we'll put some gloss medium on there. So, if you look up inside of there, see where it's kinda, it's kinda green? You see that? Okay, so we're gonna come around. Do a little bit over here. Now, it's okay that we got quite a bit on the back side. Because we're gonna pull this. First of all, we're gonna pull it out this way. But we're also gonna hit this, all these waves with a little, just a tick of white on their caps. Just a little bit to pop up the top. Um, this foamy stuff here, it would be really thin. It's pretty thick here, but in all reality, your foam is gonna be really thin. You don't wanna really put any green into that. Um, 
I suppose you could, you could put some browns into it. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to take a little bit more gloss medium, gonna throw it over top. Oh man, my power cord there. We're gonna take gloss medium, we're gonna throw it over top of the, uh, my airbrush, I'm just trying to hang my airbrush. I don't have my airbrush holder here. Um, Mm -hmm. la, 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 la. Okay, got it, got it. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit more uh, gloss medium on the back side of this wave. Um, we're probably gonna throw some up in there. Those other guys are all pretty good. Um, they look like they're pretty nice. One thing that you will find if you use the flame method, it will yellow, slightly yellow out your waves. Not a huge deal though. You'll see why here in a second. Not a huge deal. We're going to pull the waves back. Put some gloss medium on there, gloss medium there. And now the white. We're almost done. We are almost done after 17 hours of wave making. My very first online wave making tutorial. Not the greatest looking waves, but you get the idea. All right, here we go. We are going to uh, I'm take my white, my titanium white. I want, I want white, 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 white. All right, take my titanium white. I'm gonna go get a little brush. Let's see. Oh. Get a little brush. And we are going to put just that smallest touch Maybe not the smallest touch, but put a little bit of titanium white up on top of the waves here. And of course, we're going to put gloss medium over top of it again. But this is going to give us just the smallest touch of higher white caps. See that? Just the, just the smallest touch. Happy little waves. Just like that. Yeah, right there. We're gonna do it just like that. Oh, look at that. It's gloss medium we're gonna have to clean up there. Okay, here we got a little bit of blue. The gloss medium will have, you know, if you have blues underneath it, it's gonna look pretty blue until it dries out. You can also then take your white and you can actually bring it out on top of your water a little bit. Okay. And then over in here in our foam. And throw some white on top of that. Some whitey foam areas. Now the foams are, you know, foams on the beach are gonna be different colors. They're not just gonna be uh, pure white. There will be a little bit of brown. Like you say, I wouldn't put too much blue in them. That's, that you're gonna get when the water gets a little bit deeper. But you definitely could put browns in them. Um, there we go, like that. Maybe we'll do like a little, little thing coming out here that's not really from a, Holly fiber and you know, once again, you don't have to have, it doesn't always have to be poly fiber to make little white areas. You can, but you just kinda just dabble it you know, lightly, lightly, lightly. You know, and look at pictures. Uh, reference, reference, reference. I'm not using any reference here and I should, but very front of this wave too. I don't want, I just want underneath that wave and the back side of that wave to have that green, that aqua color. So I'm gonna tag it with white so it's covered up there. And I could do this with an airbrush too. Um, you know, I kind of like this hard like paint white though up on some of it. Once again, you can kind of see here on, I think you can, 
on this wave, your the uh, folly fiber is just a little bit. It's just a little bit heavy as far as coarse, so you can really see the fibers. Um, like I say, the the light, the really thin. I don't know what they call lightweight polyfiber, but there's definitely really super fine polyfibers. Just awesome to work with. I'll have to go to Hobby Lobby or someplace and get some because I don't have any. And this new model railroad I'm making, uh, the uh, uh, Amherst Bergen and Burl, has going to have a beach and a harbor. So it's going to have a lot of water on it. It's going to have a swamp too. So actually a big swamp. So here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is once this is done, the idea is, let me just kind of dry brush the tops of these here. Uh, I'm gonna dry this off. And I'm gonna put uh, gloss on it again to gloss up these, these wave caps. And that's it. That's gonna be the whole, it's gonna be all of it. Um, it's all you need to do. It's that easy. Uh, it looks really good. When you start putting this stuff into, into um, on sand or on rocks, just amazing stuff. Love it, love it, love it. Love making water, love making uh, trees. Bushes, stones, hand carving stones, all that scenery stuff, just love it. I'm gonna pull this one out here. Really light, be really light with it. You don't have to be heavy handed. You can just keep going over it if you don't like it. Just keep going over it and brighten it up. But don't try to start out all bright at the first, the first, uh, first try. Um, yeah, you, you'll kill it if you try it at the first try. Make it all bright, okay. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to dry this, put another gloss on it, and I'll come back and we'll, we'll shoot some pictures and we'll wrap it up. But, I mean, that's it. That's that's uh, water coming up the beach. I know it started out to be open water. I know. I apologize. We'll do that next time. But uh, water coming up, coming up on the beach, and uh, we'll dry it up, and we'll uh, be back in a minute. Okay, we dried most of it out. Um, we're going to throw just a little bit more medium man we put a lot of this stuff on here um it's pretty co it's pretty caked there's a lot but that's how i always do these uh i want every little bit of it to be shiny when it's done i don't want any dull spots even on the foam even on the tops of the uh waves they have to be shiny uh one thing i like to do too this brush is really junky and old but if you use a really nice clean brush you can make sure you smooth out. Don't You don't want bubbles in it. Uh, bubbles around the waves are okay, but they never scale out right. So you have these, what would be giant, giant bubbles, which will be super ugly, and uh, you don't want those. So um, at least I don't. Maybe you do. I, I doubt it, but who knows. Uh, you'll inevitably get tons of them, and you just kind of got to brush them out. Uh, as long as you don't accidentally have a bunch of water mixed in um, with your gloss medium, you'd probably be okay. I'm actually getting up underneath that um, wave, and that'll help uh, smooth it out up underneath there a little bit. Uh, I've done some curling waves, big, huge curling waves before. I mean, big, like that tall. I love those things. They're really cool, but that's a completely different technique. Um, it involves resin. Uh, foam. I love doing it. It's very neat. Uh, so here we go. We're, we're just glossing all of it. Um, kind of keep brushing once again with, look at that. I put two little trails of gloss medium. It all already started to set up over here. Not a big deal. As long as you don't let it set up, you can break it up and you may have a little texture from your brush in there but if it's small texture it's okay all right so here we go pulling this stuff out um, there it is i'll take some pictures of this uh, i hope you guys liked it and we'll try to 
adjust the, the light here. Uh, that's my little tutor tutorial on wave making, and that's how uh, we do waves rolling up on the beach. I hope you guys dig it. Um, I have a lot of fun doing it. I get some compliments on my water. Uh, I really wanted uh, people to be able to see how I do it. So there's some supposed to be deep water um, did waves uh, rolling up on the beach instead. Much harder to do waves on the beach. Deep water is the first few steps. You're doing a dark blue, light blue. Uh, tick of green you can, but only on waves if they're, they're curling up like we did on this wave back here. Um, and that's it. That's all you do for deep water. This uh, uh, beach water, um, coastal water gets much more complicated, especially when you're doing rocks and, and you want to get the colors of the rocks underneath it. Anyway, thank you guys. I'm going to take some pictures. I'll include some pictures in this video. Um, I'm from, I'm James A. Powell. I'm from Monster City Studios and uh, here in Fresno, California. I also have a web, uh, Facebook site, uh, dirtspot.7. You can check out and Monster City Studios on Facebook, uh, same thing on Instagram, james.a.powell on Instagram. Check it out and uh, we'll be posting more of our stuff, especially when this new layout starts happening. All right, there we go. Waves on the beach. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.